So we're here today with uh, Alex Volkov from NVIDIA. Um, hi, Alex. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you do at NVIDIA. Well, I'm, uh, I have my electrical engineering is my background. I have uh, uh, bachelor's and master's degrees I got from IIT. And uh, I've been working uh, as a systems engineer. I started out actually doing RF electronics, but uh, throughout my career, I kind of shifted towards more uh, software-oriented uh, systems uh, programming. And for NVIDIA, I'm a solutions architect. That's my current role. Uh, I work with customers uh, primarily in Midwest region. I'm based out of Chicago, so it's primarily in the central region. I uh, work with them on various projects, um, HPC, uh, deep learning, all sorts of GPU related challenges, anything they uh, they want to collaborate with, I often uh, work with them or I do CUDA tutorial sessions. And Tell me a little bit about your talk today. What was your topic? So my topic was uh, about how you scale your workloads on uh, data clusters uh, with GPUs and how to make uh, massive computations uh, uh, on your in your data center using uh, technologies like MPI and containers. Okay. So combining those to do your scale. Are there any specific open source tools that you use to make this happen? Primarily the ones that uh, NVIDIA develops. There's a, a popular library called Nickel, which is NVIDIA communication library, uh, and GPU Direct, which enables uh, uh, remote direct memory access between GPUs that would reside on uh, on separate nodes and so distributed where you have uh, nodes, you know, two computers that are, uh, that are discrete and you have GPUs on them, so they can talk to each other directly through GPU Direct. So other open source technologies are uh, NVIDIA Docker or LibNVIDIA container, which is open source and that enables you to put pass through GPUs uh, to the containers. Um, so those are the primary open source technologies from NVIDIA. Obviously, there's a lot of open source technologies uh, that we rely on from other third parties. You know, the base OS systems and uh, MPI itself, we use OpenMPI quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and a few libraries from Mellanox. So. Okay. And are you, presumably, are you using the CentOS operating system as your base OS or, or other other platforms? What? Uh, we use CentOS uh, as a very popular uh, OS system, especially mm -hmm. we have uh, various product line, uh, uh, lineups uh, through OEMs like Dell. Uh, they have their popular C4130 and their uh, uh, servers and uh, HP has Apollo. Uh, server line, and we have our own DGX where we have a partnership with RHEL and we support RHEL and CentOS on that as well. So we, we use it in that capacity. Containers themselves often are Ubuntu based, it's just mm -hmm. a community, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these things were based, you know, kind of grew out of university, so a lot of them use uh, um, Ubuntu as a base for the, some of the containers. Sure. But the uh, actual management OS, uh, often in data centers, is uh, CentOS. And so I'll say all of our clients that I've interacted with use that CentOS or RHEL. And, and has the fact that all of this is open source, and um, I, I, I presume it's helped your, your team's work as uh, you move forward? Uh, yeah, it's significant because of uh, collaboration involved. Because uh, we can put something, if it's closed source, it's difficult uh, for the end user then to say he encounters some incompatibility or bug. How does he communicate that back? Well, you have to maybe contact someone, send an email, we file a bug, it goes through a process. If, you, if, if perhaps he has expertise to fix it himself and says, okay, I'll just fix it, but I want to share it with the community, uh, and we have it open sourced, uh, he can just put that on uh, open source repo, such as we often use GitHub or GitLab, uh, and share it and say, listen, I have a solution, but you have this bug, and then we could, you know, use that bug, use his solution, or come up with our own, but the, uh, the developer and development cycle is much quicker mm -hmm. and, uh, and more interactive with the end users. 
So moving forward, you know, and obviously NVIDIA is a huge player um, in this arena. I mean, are, are there things that we can look forward to that you can share, like moving forward in, in like around GPU efficiency and HPC in general? Sure. Uh, yeah, I pointed out a few things uh, in my presentation. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly improving, like uh, in our latest uh, version of Nickel. Uh, we're uh, constantly working and researching various uh, communication algorithms, like uh, our latest ver version of Nickel supports tree reduction, hierarchical reduction. Uh, prior to that, it was only ring-based. So it was specifically for Oak Ridge National Labs, where they have a summit, a machine with massive uh, uh, GPU cluster, uh, the tree-based reduction is significantly improves performance in that machine. Uh, and we're constantly improving uh, our container system and uh, releasing CUDA with new features. As you know, um, yesterday was our 15th anniversary for CentOS. And um, I've been asking everybody, what was the first time that you used CentOS? <laughs> well, for sure, I've used it. Um, I, I don't know, I would say, um, I mean, around 2012, mm -hmm. so, uh, what years, two, seven years ago. Uh, again, before, like I mentioned, I was an uh, electronics, so I wasn't as much into the computer science aspect mm -hmm. of it. Uh, and I, in school, we developed a lot on just Windows machines. Um, but uh, yeah, once I got into high performance computing, uh, I mean, pretty much, I, I worked. So prior to NVIDIA, I actually worked for ExxonMobil. So in ExxonMobil, it was uh, CentOS and Red Hat. So I, I worked on that platform for developing and programming. Well, uh, Alex, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about your uh, presentation. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.